Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Think Business. Uh, it's an exclusive with Dr. Lisa Cooney. Dr. Um, Lisa, I, was, uh, I just had a session with you. Uh, my wife had an individual session with you. It was um, so cool. We had the, uh, the greatest experience. And um, I wanted to have you on the show, so I really appreciate you taking time to be here. I want to tell everybody a little bit about you. You are a world-renowned authority on thriving after trauma, uh, be it physical, emotional, sexual, or financial. Over the last uh, 25 years, you've supported thousands of clients to break free from abuse and any form of limitation so they can create a life they truly enjoy. You are a licensed marriage and family therapist, master theta healer, certified access consciousness facilitator, and three-day body class facilitator. Also the creator of The Roar. Your company is Live Your Roar, a radically orgasmic, alive reality method. The cutting edge approach uh, to basically transformation is based on practices that you use to heal yourself from early childhood abuse and a life-threatening disease. So thank you. Um, I want to start... Um, Really? Well, thank you for having me, John. It was. Oh, really are you kidding? No, are you kidding? No, I appreciate. I share it with you, but this, watching the first time I saw your intro and the movie, it it spoke to my heart. Oh, thank the you. The soulful part, especially, and I almost started crying, but it really spoke to well, my thank soul. You. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, you know, this, I, 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 my, my podcast is actually called Think Business, but I do these exclusives, which are a little bit more soulful, where we get a little bit deeper than just talking about, you know, the business element. But, you know, one of the things you talk about is, is trauma. And I think a lot of people, you know, I, I want to kind of go, go deep into trauma, but I think these last two years have been very traumatic for people and have brought up a lot of triggers and it brought up a lot of baggage. And so maybe let's start there. You know, how do you define, how does one define trauma today? Well, I'm going to say how I define trauma. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's, there's a lot of definitions about them and they're lovely. But for me, trauma is you're in the present, but there are things going on all around you that trigger a heightened sense of reactivity where you basically lose your cool and yeah. you're reacting in ways that you just know, or not you, but you actually don't know exactly what's going on or how to stop it. Yeah. And, and then you become worst case scenario, you become that reaction yeah. that trauma instead of kind of like what was done to you, you become right. And you're carrying it with you all your life forward, but the events happened usually sometime, some of it is right now, the last three years, and a lot of it can get triggered and rooted in our bodies from the age of seven to, and back to conception. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's, let's kind of break that down a little bit because- sure. You know, we, I think we all, and I can speak for myself, I know there's always triggers I have. I was actually talking to a client about this earlier today. We were talking about the power of meditation and how that can take a trigger and a reaction to our rational brain and, and, and make it a response, right? Kind of transform ourselves in real time. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> there's, there's ways that we can do it ourselves in real time, but then there's the triggers as you're talking about going back to, you know, conception where mm -hmm. we don't even know where the trigger comes from. Mm -hmm. And so let's kind of start there, right? The triggers maybe that we come into this lifetime with, you know, maybe they're, and I'd like your opinion on this. Are they past life triggers? Are they like, how far back do the triggers go? Oh, well, the, tr the triggers can go lifetimes, generations, um, just way back on through the DNA, um, like a lot of times when I work with the Jewish population, we're going all the way back to, we all know what we're going back to. Yeah. Um, Native American tribes that I work with, we go that way to the, you know, the gentrific gentrification and all of that secularization. I mean, it, we all carry it with us. Yeah. However, there's also this spiritual bypass we could do. And I worked with enough people to know that if they come and they've done a lot of work on themselves, if they keep going to, oh, that triggers from my past life and I've worked on this 100,000 times, I'm actually going to try to keep them in their body this lifetime and see if we can work it out right here, right now, which might actually heal and transform the past. 
Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you see, you can't say it for everybody, but it's very different. You know, what I try to do is in the now. Okay. What are you triggered about in the now? This is the roar method. And where do you feel that in your body? And now if we could, if I, if I asked you to let yourself get younger and younger, littler and littler, smaller and smaller, and you just let your body talk, could you let me know about one of the first times in your life where you felt the same or similar feeling, but not from your head, yeah. from the subconscious. And they're like, and I would say, first thought, best thought, no thought, not your head. And they say, and I say, they're usually blank for a minute. And I say, day or night, they go day or night, you know, whatever. Uh, less than five, older than five, less than five. Um, and sometimes when we're talking about conception, I've actually got people to talk to me in the womb and highlight first, second or third trimester and what they mimic and embody being in the womb, not quote unquote alive. And I use that loosely right now, um, not alive consciously, but alive in the body. Right. And that's not actually what I mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> I can explain, but you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. Especially with what's going on in the world right now. Yes, no. I'm trying not to get political here, but here it is. And they could actually tell me what their sense was and perception was in the first, second, or third trimester and what they decided. And then that decision we can track all their life until their current day working with me. And we can remove it from every situation, even from the cellular memory in the womb. Mm. Now, now, if somebody initially goes to a past life, generations and, and, and that, I'll go with them there. But it also, you have to kind of look for, you know, dissociation is real. And especially if we're talking about trauma. And that's just like a, I shine a flashlight on these things. It's easy for me. It's kind of like what you do is easy for you. Right. I could say one word about my business and you're like, I know where to go. Right. right? It's like you're trauma right. for me when someone comes up and they say what's going on in their life. It doesn't even have to be about trauma. It's usually about health, relationship or money. And then we track it back to some trauma, emotional, physical, sexual, financial, spiritual, or even a judgment that they've had about themselves or was told to them about themselves. Yeah. Obviously from a teacher creates a persona. Okay. I'll be quiet now. No, I love, I love everything you're talking about. And I want to talk about removing some of this and the work that you do. I had a session with you. It was incredible. It was a 30 minute session. We did it just like this over what well, we did it over zoom. Yes. And I just let you kind of like do your thing and you did it was amazing. And, and Joanna shared with me that she had an amazing experience as well. So I, I turned 50 yesterday and, uh, um, and, welcome, and welcome. When, thank you. Thank you. When I was in my late twenties and met Joanna, she was going to a holistic doctor in Chicago. His name was uh, Dr. Darren Weissman. I've had him on the show and I went to him and I had never been to a holistic doctor and he was an energy healer. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, tell me what's going on. I said, Oh, I, and I'm not, I'm not giving medical advice right now. I'm just sharing my experience just for the, you know, think community. And I said, you know, I'm lactose intolerant, but I wasn't until a few years ago when I eat this, I, 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 uh, my body kind of can't process it. I started telling him all these things and he started doing energy work on me. Yeah. And then it would process and you would say, okay, you're no longer lactose intolerant. Okay. Go eat a hamburger. Go eat turkey. It won't make you fall asleep. Go eat meat. You'll be able to digest it. Go eat this. And it was all energy work. And it was the first, and it all happened. And it was the first experience I got yeah. where he started taking things energetically out of me. Yeah. And so it was an incredible experience. And you were just removing things. I don't even know. We didn't even really talk about it. You just were just taking things out. And so- can you talk about your gift and how you can get in there and remove something that's been there um, and is just that somebody can't just take out physically? Right. You right. actually described, I'm going to have to listen to this again because you described it really well, John. <laughs> you described it really well. And yeah, it, it is a gift. And thank you for that. And sometimes I jokingly refer to it as my you know secret sauce. Yeah. Here's, here's the secret sauce. And in a certain way, I don't actually know how to put some of it in words. It, I had an experience that I write about in my first book, Radically Alive Beyond Abuse, when I was seven, where like the entire 
us talking right here, the physical world just kind of is almost as if like a curtain opened in like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and I just saw colors and energies and darker energies, lighter energies, different things in this reality that we would call light energies, maybe some darker energies or evil energies, sickness, illness, disease, angels, spirits, blah, 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 blah. Of course, I thought I was having a psychotic break. I didn't have yeah. words at seven. Um, but I thought for sure, because I grew up in New York, I thought for sure the people with the white jackets from Bellevue Hospital were going to come and put me in it. So I zipped it.com. But what happened in that moment, years later, through my own therapy, my own personal work, was I was downloaded with a lot of information that I use in my work. So someone like yourself comes in and says, everything's good, but I just want to clean everything up to get to the next level and do your thing. I mean, I'm like, okay, let's go have some fun. <laughs> right. And I love that. Right. And, and essentially through all the things that you read out in the beginning, they all helped me get to the point of unleashing my own sauce, so to speak, and connecting with this memory at seven. Um, and what I was very clearly told is that there are certain and told and my ears hear things that um, beyond what you and I are talking right now. Yeah. My ears hear things like go there, ask that question, go down that track. And then, and then my vision shows me something of the person I'm working with in their childhood with different scenarios that don't make yeah. any sense to me. I'm just given the words to ask questions. And then my body gives me the feelings that the person I'm working with potentially could be feeling. And I track that through the roar method, the present situation back to the past. And I get the person to their past, not reliving it, clearing it. Yeah. And basically what I'm clearing is, hooks and cords and attachments and possessions consciously or unconsciously. What I'm clearing is soul fragments, right? You're talking about the soul of business parts of us that when we're told we're bad or unworthy or lovable, or we're, we fail a test in school or something and we're, or we get detention or we have to go home from school or we're in a culture that was, you know, put through genocide or whatever. These are things we, that weigh on our body. And they weigh on us as physical weight, but it's energetic weight. And so I am like Rota Rooter with the energetic weight. Yeah. And I get that off you and let you see that it's not yours, that it was from back there or that age or whatever. But I don't tell you that. I guide you so that, and then I ask you questions so that you can get your own yes, your own no, seems light, seems not so light. And you give me the content and then I match that with what I'm hearing. And then I find your belief systems mm. that are actually creating the dis-ease or disease, um, garnering a energetic congruence in your reality, not living the way you want. I love it. I love it. I love everything that you just shared. And you, you said it so, um, I, think any, I think most anybody will be able to understand and walk that process. I want to put, I want to, I want to share two stories. I, I never share these types of, I very rarely share these types of stories, but I want to put some, uh, a little bit more texture than community to these. Uh, I was, um, going to a masseuse for a while and when I was, and, and while I was going to the masseuse, I also went to a, um, uh, a, a psychic, a medium. Yeah. And, um, and my dad came through who had recently passed away at the time and came back and apologized to me about something. I won't bore anybody with the details, but something that I had really needed to hear that this medium would have never known in one gajillion years. Yeah. And it, the just, you know, people say, oh, that's such a weight off my shoulders, as you were saying, just kind of, you mentioned uh, something like that. And so after the session, within a couple of days, I went back to the masseuse. I just happened to have another appointment. And she said to me, what happened to you? You have no knots in your back or your shoulders. You have, you have um, shoulders like, a, like almost like a seven-year-old. They're that relaxed. Yes. And so, I was, so I was telling her the story, but I think it adds some flavor to 
we carry stuff. And, and for me, it was like, it was such tension, but I don't think it's just me. I think it's a lot of people that we don't even know we're carrying. And it takes a professional like you, like this medium I went to, to get it out of us so we could live our best lives. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm so glad you told that uh, experience because I had a very similar experience with my father. When he died, a lot of things changed for me and I became very cynical and skeptical. And somebody was massaging me one time and she said, is it okay if I channel a message? And she, I didn't even know she channeled. Yeah. Said, sure. She goes, it's from your father. And I started bawling and he had just died like a couple months earlier. And, um, he said, my nickname is Lily. So he would always, I knew that she couldn't know that. So she literally did verbatim, Lily, you're getting hard. You're getting cynical. You're getting, um, skeptical and you're losing your brilliance. Don't let it. Yeah. It's your uniqueness. And that really took me on this trajectory to where I am today. Yeah. You know, and I also, as you mentioned in the beginning, was diagnosed with a very serious life-threatening condition. And the doctor told me three choices at 30, this is 22, 23 years ago now, that I, my body almost vomited at the choices. It was just like, no, no, and no. And I'll never forget him. He was, John, he was six foot four. And I'm yeah. five four. I'm looking up to him. He's towering over me. He's like, these are your only choices, you know, like this. And I'm like, there has to be another way. And that's when I let I, I leaped into the unknown. Yeah. And then the energy healing community found me. Yeah. And with one hand to a teacher after a class, the disease was gone, took the test right after it. I felt it leave. Yeah. And I was like, I got I gotta know this. You How do you do this? It's amazing. That's you know, where I am. Yeah, I love that. You know, um, I, it's funny because when I do a podcast, I don't often share a lot of stories, uh, but I just feel drawn to right now based on that. Because um, uh, I always like to focus on the guests, but I, I but based on that, I just want to share this. I think it's it's so important to be your own doctor. Yeah. Um, if I wasn't my own doctor in my life, I would be dead. Um, I turned fifty, and when I was thirty, I had testicular cancer. I knew I had it through meditating. I had no symptoms. I intuitively knew it. Um, and fast forward at my 10 year checkup, my doctor told me that I was riddled with cancer and pretty much gonna die. Wow. And wanted to start me on chemo immediately. My wife and I went to a emergency meeting with him. I said, I just think you're wrong. I just don't feel it in my body like I did the first time. And he said, the odds are one in a million. We need to start treatment. We need to this. I had to push very hard to get an emergency CAT scan, new blood, and ultrasound. down, um, where I think most people wouldn't have. They would have just taken the news. Yes. But for a day and a half, Lisa, I pretty much thought my wife and I, we had two young babies, thought I was dying, mm -hmm. even though I, I consciously knew I wasn't. Long story short, a day and a half later, my doctor calls me, um, a very renowned oncologist, and says, "You're right. We botched your blood. You're fine." Yes. And 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 I appreciate that. Thank you. But it's I just share the story because you can't just have believe. I believe in doctors. I love doctors. I love my doctors. I'm not suggesting that, but you always have to be your own doctor and get a second opinion yes. and third opinion and look at other options that are out there. And my non-doctor, and let me just say for the record, I was pre-med for a year. I failed every single class. So I'm not giving doctor advice right now. Boy, we have a lot more similarities than I knew before this. I was, I was nursing before and I looked at all that stuff and I was like, no way. Jo, uh, my wife was, my, Joanna's a nurse. Joanna's a nurse, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So let's so let's get back to you. So so one of the things um, on your website, I want to read it because I, I love the way that it's written. A maverick of consciousness, Dr. Lisa weaves together an electric blend of cross-cultural, multi-faith, collaborative, and participatory spiritual approaches in her work with people. With people, you are a catalyst for change, dedicated to assisting others to acknowledge their true power, their courage, and their unique purpose. I love I love the way that is articulated. Let's work backwards in the paragraph and talk about 
purpose. Right now, we are seeing in the in the in the world the great resignation. We're seeing more people resign from jobs because the culture is toxic. Because they want to start their own side gig, they realize that they've been making forty thousand dollars a year and they can do something on Etsy and make the same amount and work right. half the time. Right. And they're taking control. Right? They're getting courage. They're getting true power. And so, how does someone? connect from your perspective into their unique purpose? I believe we all have one, but what is your formula for getting people to that? Uh -huh. Soul print. It's your soul print. Your soul print. Yeah. I, that, this was actually coined by a, a rabbi, this term. And I did my dissertation and my research in uh, Israel, found it. Mm. And um, your soul print is likened to your, the contour and character of your soul. It's unique to you. And really the highest goal of, spirit, goal of spiritual living, if you will, is to impress your soul print on the lips of this reality. How do I know what my soul print is? I rarely think of food. I rarely think of problems or any of that kind of stuff or, or a pain or an ache or something in my body or even about the world when I'm working with people. Like when I'm with you on Zoom, I just did a three-day immersion with somebody and I'm usually you know, sometimes like really, really tired, but I'm like ready to go. I don't usually do things on Monday after, but I've been ready to go. <laughs> right. And I've been back to back to back to back to back with people living and unleashing my soul print on the lips of this reality. So one way that I know what my purpose is, is I'm energized. I am not, if I'm tired, it's more of an accomplishment and I feel good about what I did. Yeah. I'm creative. I'm generative. And then here's the most amazing thing. Or another amazing thing is I attract consistently and continuously, easily and effortlessly, yeah. the people, places, circumstances, situations, and event. A great conversation on a podcast. Um, we had three guys at the house. We're doing remodeling. We did all the inside. Now we're doing the outside. And they all came when I was running back here and somebody handled it all. That wasn't expected, but that's the part about living your soul. Yeah. Life. Everything just flows with truth, strength, and integrity. Now, yeah. those are big words. Now, if you're sitting at your job and you're like, I don't have any other choices. I don't have any other education. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. The first step is a one degree shift. And that's to say, and I always do this, put your hand on your, your belly, you know, and your chest and be like, oh, I'm unhappy. This doesn't work for me anymore. And I wonder how long this hasn't worked for me. That's it. Just acknowledge yeah. that. Like a captain on an ocean that changes the ship, changes the Nautilus one degree. That's a huge change in trajectory on the open ocean. If you sense yourself, which is what people have been doing and forced in the last three years, is to look at their life because they're yeah. stuck. They were stuck. Even with the people <laughs> they're stuck with. Right. And flurry friends and little children and whatever. And we're all seeing and you, what we couldn't ignore anymore. You yeah. can when you're busy, right? right. You can when you're yeah. moving, but when you're home, you can't ignore it. So you have to lean in. Lean in to what makes your heart sing. And if you never know what makes your heart sing because you never ask that, first lean into all the things you don't like about what you're seeing. So at least you can acknowledge this is not the life that you want, but it's the life that you created. Yeah. Now, where can I go? The next right step, just one degree to find the change. And so when someone comes to me with that issue, I'll be honest with you with the war method I would use right away. And I'd be like, have you ever felt purposeful or excited and exhilarated in your life? Hands down, John, people always tell me something in their childhood where they're the freest and fullest expression of who they are. And it could be in soccer or baseball or at a Super Bowl or drawing, you know, a horse that someone thought was a cat, you know, whatever. But they felt great about it. And then what I do is I have them anchor it in their body and have it come to life. Mm. And then I have them plot with me from then until their current day where they have felt those sorts of things again. So they know they have. And they know it's accessible and it's not gone because they're they're saying most people say, oh, I'm not seven anymore. Yeah, you know, I'm not seven anymore. But every day I get to go to work and open the universe the way it was open to me. And that's a gift. 
That's a gift. And that's childlike imagination. So what I do with them is then now it's associated in their body. And then I find that original point in their childhood where they let their purpose go. And it's usually a belief like I'm a failure. I'm nothing. I'm unimportant. I'm unlovable. I'm evil. And I shouldn't exist. Some version of that. Right. And then that sucked the light out of them and the life. And then they look around and that sucking the life out of them is their life. Yeah. So we go back there, change it because this part of us is still there enjoying what we were, but you can't have it here in the present. So I bring it here. So it's mm -hmm. here with you and then you do it. Now I'm not saying that that's going to make somebody, Oh my God, I know my purpose tomorrow. No, it's just, Hey, what do you love to do that you never think about food right. or problems and that you can, and you never get bored? Do that. Yeah, that's so beautiful. But what you're doing is creating a space for them to raise their consciousness. Correct. And their, and their level of awareness in present day Correct. so they can bring that into them. I remember reading a book uh, 20 some years ago called Living Your Yoga. And it was about can you live your yoga off the mat? Can you bring the space with you? Yeah. Uh, I remember reading a book 25 years ago called The Seed of the Soul by Gary Zukav. Yes. He talks about the ideal human being is when the personality ends and the soul begins and you can't even tell. That was a that had a big impact on me, knowing that I was out of alignment and needed to get more in alignment with my soul versus, you know, maybe a sarcastic level of piece of my personality. Absolutely. Our uh, soul is that soul print. It's the, it's, yeah. the, it's the blood that pumps through us. When somebody smacks us, part of us gets lost in that smack and we get the imprint of you're bad and you're ashamed. When somebody says you're fired, we get the imprint of that energy and we become it for some reason. Some of us more than others, but parts of our energy just gets um, separated from us. And over and over and over, if you don't collect that or even know it's separate from you, you just get more and more tired and sluggish and like, you know, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, you know, and right. you see the life out of everything. Mm. But bringing even the shamanic nomenclature says the, the greatest disease in this reality is soul loss. So when I heard that, see, soul is a big thing for me. It's what I based my whole dissertation on. But my grandmother in church, I was raised Italian Catholic and I'm more spiritual than any kind of religious thing. I part of my doctoral program was socially engaged spirituality, where we studied all the world's religion and how I knew that no God is saying some of the things that we have out in the world. They're all basically saying love, <laughs> but okay, we'll go into that another day, maybe. <laughs> um, and I wanted that because I knew that in my soul. And so as somebody who's worked with, you know, 15 or 20 different cultures, not even speaking the language and working with translators, that's what I get to do is return everyone to their soul, their intrinsic divine soul print yeah. out of the past into the present so that they can con contribute to the fullest freest expression of them on this planet. And they live their roar because more people living your, their roar versus professional, excuse me for a second, professional gaslighting. Who has, who has like, I didn't even know I had a landline anymore. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hello, welcome to the world. This is doing business at home. Um, you know, instead of psychologically and phys physician wise gaslighting people and saying, this is your only choice, I get it. Use your soul, use your body, use your knowing. Okay, thank you for that. This diagnosis sucks. Where else can I go? And it's, and how can I blend something together? that creates the fullest and freest expression of me, not alienating anything unless it's a big no and not judging anything unless it's just something that just doesn't work for you. Yeah. It's more of that flow. I love that. Lisa, let's, let's talk about that flow for a second. Mm -hmm. And, and that flow that somebody can bring through quiet time, meditation, how, you know, what, where is that? Because I don't think we can, we can't get that running 110 miles an hour. Yeah. And so, you know, people know I meditate. I've been meditating for 25 years. And so, but people always ask me, but I'm going to ask you, how do you quiet the mind, meditate, take silent time, whatever, you know, anyone defines it. Yeah. Where, what do we need? What do you recommend people do to find that space to even connect to their soul? 
Exactly. Well, I'll tell you exactly what I do. I call it my creation station time. I'm a usual 4 a.m. waker. I wake up before anybody moves in my house and it's still dark out. <laughs> and besides making my coffee and maybe feeding the puppy, I sit and I breathe in the pause, postpone action until serenity exists, pause. And in that pause, I usually have some version of my hand. It's, it's a meditation, but it's, my, it's from my soul. You know, hand on the thymus, hand on the pubic bone. I feel my feet on the floor, back against the chair. And then I expand my energy essentially to the room I'm in, the territory, the land I'm in, and I'm breathing space in all of that. And I'm asking, how can I be the greatest contribution today? What would, what am I grateful for today? What qualities would I like to cultivate today? But not from my mind. It's more like it's from my soul. And sometimes I listen to things that just connect me or I read something. I have it all in this one area and wherever I'm guided, I just pull my hand and, and I pick something up and that's exactly what I need. So essentially what I'm saying is make the time to choose that space for you. And I've been doing this religiously um, for years and years and years. And I start my day that way every day. I start with me and the universe, the universe and me. And I yeah. discover how I can be the greatest contribution personally as a being, professionally as a professional, um, as you know, a partner, as uh, a, a stepmom, as a um, you know bonus children, <laughs> as you know three furry friends, you know that are are our children, so to speak. Like and all of this, and then all the housing projects. Yeah. And then you know I think you're only as spiritually fit as you know you get to really see it when you're around your family. <laughs> right. Like right. your mothers and fathers. And I'm going to see how I do. You can ask me the next week because I have my mother coming <laughs> and my aunt coming tomorrow night for the first time to Texas from New York. Be careful. The earth yeah. is going to shake everybody. <laughs> the Italians are coming. Right, right. And, um, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put myself to the test and see how yeah. I do because it's been a while. Yeah. But I know for sure I will still have my morning time. I will have yeah. that routine. And then I go and do my movement. People call it the gym or whatever. I call him my body artist. I get on Zoom with my body artist and he moves my body a different something every day. And then I do something that I love to do, which is kickboxing. And they have this great dance music and I love to punch and kick and I'm an adult and I can do that in this class <laughs> and I don't get put in jail. Yeah. So that's how I start my day. Creation yeah. station, moving my body, and then I'm ready to gift every day anew. Period. I love it. I love it. I love it that you put yourself first <clears throat> and, uh, you know, do what you got to do to get grounded for the day. Yeah. Uh, just ready for everybody and everything that's thrown at you. I want to talk about, um, are you good with time right now? Yeah. I don't, okay. So I want to talk about um, your, when you talk about, it, and you've mentioned a couple of times in different ways, you know, you'll, you, you're guided to something. I want to talk about, <clears throat> how people can tap into that and trust that it's it's real, that the guide is mm. it's real, right? So, I, you know, you talk about getting into your true power and courage. Um, and I think part of the courage sometimes is actually listening to the voice, right? And, and, and trusting yourself. Can you talk a little bit about how to listen to that voice, your instinct, yeah. your gut? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, you know, it's gotten a lot easier. I'll be really honest. Um, I learned that I had a, um, like the one degree population that has an allergic reaction, physiological reaction to alcohol. <laughs> so basically I learned this after learning that <laughs> and no longer having alcohol in my life. I'm okay with whatever anybody else chooses. But for me, what that did from a very young age was my solution to not feeling anything. Right. So I had to learn in my uh, younger adult years to exist without any solution other than breath and maintaining my own connection to my life, my choices and everything and not using food or alcohol or drugs or any of that stuff or my past trauma as an excuse for not choosing what would be 
what would what my body was saying because I got in relationships that didn't work for my body, but I never knew it, right? Because I didn't want to. I chose jobs or people or contracts that would always end up in some sort of conflict. I can go on and on and on and on. And then I just made a decision and it coincided with the, the finding out about being allergic to alcohol um, that I was going to learn my body and do nothing if my body said no and do everything if my body said yes, no matter what, even though fear would cuck everything and run or, you know, um, that kind of thing, I was just going to lean in and face it. And so what I learned at first, I learned muscle testing. So for me, I learned that through my body because I'm very kinesthetic. And so if I say something like, my name is Lisa, my body will already go forward like that, even though I'm to the side, I am a frog and my body will go back because I'm not a frog, maybe in another lifetime. And so that's a very simple way. But if you're not connected to your body, it might be hard at first. Yeah. Um, but that's one way that has really helped me. Body, do you want to eat this? My body goes forward, I eat it. My body goes back, no way. That's how I learned that I was allergic for some reason to cashews and eggplant and tomatoes because my body said no. So I listened to it and didn't eat those things. After decades of eating things that are just, you know, your mom puts food on the table, you eat it. <laughs> you don't think about it. You just eat what's there. Um, take the pause. So that's one way. The other thing that I do, and I learned this from one of the, areas that you mentioned that I was certified in is uh, this thing called light and heavy. When it's light in your body, it's the truth. It's from access consciousness. And when it's heavy in your body, it's a lie or ask more questions like a yellow light. Proceed with caution. Yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, and the way that I have explained this to people is get a food that you love. For me, I'm a New Yorker. Pizza. OK, pizza, coffee, my body right now, I'm salivating. You know, I can hear the crunch of the cheese and the oil, and, you know, even yeah. though this is, I don't live there anymore, but I, I know that that's my yes. So when I, when a business op, uh, possibility comes or someone wants to come do our irrigation and landscaping, or someone wants to do the plumbing or the pool, whatever. Yes. No, light or heavy. I'll actually make choices like that instead of give me your resume. Right. <laughs> And if it's a no, I'll ask more questions, you know, but I can feel it in my body. If it feels like pizza and coffee, I'm all in because that's an energetic vibe. If it feels like the time I was in Bali and got really, really sick and want to vomit on a certain food that I still can't eat to this day, then I know that's my yellow light. And actually it's a red light if it's that strong. And my body gets this like, pardon the phrase, Jewish tradition, the matzo ball. It's like a matzo ball. In yeah, I love it. You can, yeah. Right. I, I did a lot of uh, I did a lot of studying of the Jewish traditions and participating in them. And I love them. And the matzo ball is like, oh, that's my heavy. You know, but when I'm fasting, it feels really, really good to eat it. But then 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, my God, I'm in the New York Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I got to unzip my, my pants. Um, and so the light, that's the truth. Energetic flow. You know, go ahead. The matzo ball, heavy. And I use food because most people know what they love and they hate. And, yeah. then, and then their body, um, you know, then their body can say, oh, that's like pizza. That's what I love. I'm going to go for that. And I have had people tell me that's changed their life using the food analogy with it. Yeah, that is. I, 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 I'm going to use everything you just said. <laughs> I'm going to use everything you just said. I've been practicing it while you're actually talking. It's oh, very great. cool. What you know, because the thing is, is like our bodies are disconnected from ourselves, And if we actually like I do this series on TikTok, this is why we're so similar, called the inner physician strategy session. And you said you want people to become their own inner physician. Yeah. This energetic congruence. I'm like, yes. Yeah. That doesn't mean don't go get help from everything that's out there. Use everything that helps you move forward. Yeah. However, you can do strategies yourself to um and that shows a commitment to really caring and loving your soul and yourself. Yeah. When you do it for you, in addition to somebody saying, here's what's good for you. When you take it on, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. It opens you up to pronoia, which is the universe is conspiring to bless you. Mm. I love it. Let's talk about Roar. 
Let's yeah. talk about the creator of Roar. Uh, <laughs> radically orgasmic, a live reality method. Yeah. Um, tell me about it. Tell us about it. Oh, well, we just got fully trademarked, so I'm very, very proud. It's oh, congratulations. Fun. That's great. And um, yeah, you know, this is uh, this is one of those labor of loves. I got to tell you, when I did my psychology degrees and everything, I really did it for me because I had the first two and a half decades of my life mired with all sorts of abuse and an attempt to kill myself because I wasn't, I couldn't get beyond it. I'm not, I didn't kill myself. I'm here. I stepped in front of a bus and the bus passed me by. There was no one on the corner when I looked, but I can still feel the shoulder being pulled back. It was oh incredible. God. At that moment, I knew that something else existed and that I had to find what that was. And then I also knew at that moment, I was young in my 20s, that if I felt that with education, training, yes, lots of abuse, but I did go to therapy already. Um, I was in recovery early. It didn't always stick the way I wanted it to stick um, until I really got clear within myself. And that's what started me on this path that I am today, May 16th of 2022, is that attempt to end my life. And I figured that there must be at least one other person, potentially even millions of other people that are suffering like this. And if I can find a way out, they can find a way out. That's literally what guided me. And I had no idea how I was going to do it. Wow. And so in enter roar. So I read everything. I went to school. I went to therapy. I went to, I flew all across the world to different therapies, like shamanic therapies, firewalks, everything. I, I, I just tried everything and I loved it. I've done different type of, you know, um, plant-based ceremonies, you know, early on in my career to like really get, I tried everything. Um, and then there's a, there's a certain things that I got into that were really like, oh, this, this, and this with this and my special sauce, this could work. And that's kind of what I do now. But Roar started like this. I was driving down the, the side highway in Sebastopol, California, where I used to live and where I wrote my dissertation. And I went through this early breakup, um, young breakup, young love kind of thing. And it was amicable, but I was enraged. <laughs> And I was so enraged, like a helpless rage, like screaming, crying, upset. But it wasn't between me and the person. It was between me with me. And so I said, huh, I think it's safer if I pull over <laughs> and not drive like this. So I literally pulled over to the side of the road. I looked at the mountains in, because it was Sonoma County, so it was really beautiful. I looked in the mountains and I was like, basically said, God, take this from me, like show me what this is because I don't know how and I can't wait to get to therapy. I'm gonna kill somebody on the road or hurt myself. And I literally, my hands went like this, which is what I do all the time. And I said, okay, what are you feeling? I'm angry, blah, 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 blah. Got everything out and I'm like, but it's not related to this. And then I heard, ask, what does this relate to? When have you felt like this in your childhood? And part of me was like, Oh, I don't want to go back there. No, 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 no. And then I heard, this is the way. And this is what you're going to do for others. But you got to do it yourself first because you can't take anyone past where you won't go, period. And I was like, okay, I'm on the side of the road. Am I going crazy? Well, at least I'm getting some sort of information. <laughs> and so then I tracked it back, the anger, the rage the shame, you know, the sadness to this time in my childhood where I watched my mother, my father come in, I'm my mother there and she was pissed with an angry face and he was pissed, but with a defensive posture, but they weren't saying they were pissed. He would leaned over and gave her a kiss and she, hi, what do you want for dinner? That kind of thing. But as a five-year-old, I feel like that matzo ball again. I'm like, what is this? That is love, but it feels like this inside. Okay, that's love. And for some reason, I made that moment etched in my body about somehow becoming unlovable myself because of what I witnessed to them. It was a little bit more to the story, but essentially it led to that unconscious belief that I'm unlovable, that love is anger, anger is love. 
And that, up until that moment in my 20s, I had never known that I bought that rage, that unlovability, and that like love was anger and anger was love into my life, my body, and my relationships. And then I said, oh my God, it's also in my business with colleagues. Oh my God, it's also in my financial flows. Oh my God, it's also in my relationship with my body. And I was like, oh my God, it's the way I feel about myself. This decision at five has informed everything and been involved in everything in my life. No wonder why I feel like four steps forward and 20 steps back and four steps forward and 20 steps back. The root of unlovability clouds every creation in the present. So I need to go to the root to pull the weed, to undo the lie and get true. And that mm. was how Roar developed. Wow. It became this method where I draw like a cage and I walk you through it and I ask you questions and um, I teach other people to do it. And I teach people to become their own inner physician because sometimes I was in the bathroom at work, putting my hands on my body, pretending like I had to go to the bathroom because I didn't, I was so enraged or upset or ashamed about something I did. I needed to check myself before I wrecked my career. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I appreciate your, um, your, you know, your, your vulnerability and the way that you share your stories so openly. Um, it's, uh, it's beautiful. And, uh, you know, you, your, your work is so, um, is so special. It is, um, I feel my wife saw you on, um, a show with Gwyneth Paltrow yeah. and, um, she went to your website, she booked a session and then she said, you gotta, you gotta just book an appointment with Dr. Lisa. So I did. And then I got an email that said, Hey, we have an opening like tomorrow, you know? So I, so I took it and, um, and I'm so glad that I did it. I'm so glad that my wife was where she was when she saw the episode uh, that led me to a session with you, because I don't know. Um, I know what you did. You're rationally, I mean, you're telling, you're sharing with it, but whatever you really did, whatever you got to, I, I, it felt when I was done that just all of this stuff I was thinking about that I didn't know I was thinking about, I stopped thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I don't know any way how to describe it, but it was like the it was like the the residue of something I get it. was gone, and um, and it was it just felt great, and uh, I was yeah. so um, I was so excited when you said that you would be on the podcast because you know in in my business I'm a business coach um, I like you um, you know I have business experience. Um, but I also work very intuitively and I also hear and see things to help my clients get unstuck. And, um, I just was, you know, blown away by your story as well as what you really did to me. And my wife was uh, just off the charts uh, with everything that you did for her. So I can't thank you. I can't thank you enough for spending some time, you know, a, a couple last, um, speed round questions for yeah. you. Great. Someone who has listened to this has gone to your and or gone to your website, who is just, you know, sitting there not knowing what to do with these new thoughts or feelings. They should what? <laughs> Good question. Book a session. <laughs> <laughs> they book can book a session, session at, uh, at your website, Dr. Lisa Cooney. Dot com. Yes. Or and or do both. There's a there's a couple of series I made called Cultivating Presence which is like a series that walks you through videos with me about getting in that pause space every day. You can call it meditation. You can call it whatever, but it's, it's really like I do a lot of those clearings that we did and the energy work that we did on the session yeah. on, the, on that series. Embrace Your Roar is also a video series for the beginners who are looking at the present reaction and wanting to open the door to the past, but gently. And yeah. I actually facilitate people with modules in a manual online at your own pace. And it's me, but it's not me live. It's yeah. online. And then you'll kind of know what, what, um, what it's like uh, and what it's bringing up for you to get more information for yeah. yourself. Those are the two things I would say right now. Yeah. And then, of course, the session at your leisure. This is what I do. Yeah. Because I do it because... John, honestly, 
because I needed it. Yeah. And for me, I know what, what I'm supposed to do here. I go and find people's souls, soul yeah. left in the past. I bring them to the present and they go live their life. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, tell people where they can buy your books and a book that's made a big impact on you. Ooh, good deal. Uh, my books, Amazon, um, all on Amazon. And they're also in many different languages. And the first one is Radically Alive Beyond Abuse. There's another one called Lies of Money. There's another one called Creating After Abuse. And I just finished one, but it's not published yet, called The Body of Change, but it's coming. Amazon.com. And if you can't find it there, just email us at customercare at drlisacuni.com. It's audiobooks and everything, and we'll help you out. I love it. And a book that's made a big impact on you? You know, I a big impact on me. Hmm. I... You, there's one that I read recently called Untamed. It was a couple, like a year ago that I read it, honestly. And I can't remember. It's a very famous author. I yeah. can't remember her name right now. But her story, the way that she wrote, is kind of like, like a Brene Brown, but not Brene Brown. Yeah. The way that she wrote everything was like what you were describing. It's very raw. It's very real. You're like yeah. living it. But my whole thing was, I want to live internally and externally aligned and yeah. that's what untamed was about i love it you know i'm glad you ended on that word because i think alignment is what it's all about when you are in alignment you can take action when you're in adjustment period it's very challenging and that's when you need to reach out to your resources and um and really ask for help and help you get back into alignment if you can't do it on your own yeah. um, Lisa, this has been a blast. Um, every think community, Dr. Lisa Cooney, a world renowned authority on thriving after trauma. Uh, I highly recommend Dr. Lisa Cooney, uh, L, uh, Dr. L I S A C O O N E Y dot com. Um, I just want to highlight a couple things. You know, uh, 1% shifts every day and make time to find your space uh, to connect with yourself. Yes. universe um, and and just trust yourself. And um, I can't thank you enough. This was a beautiful uh, time spent with you. Think community, if Dr. Lisa can help you, uh, please reach out. I'll just give you closing thoughts. Any closing thoughts? Yeah, I got two. If no one's told any of you when you listen to this that you are loved and that they love you, I do. And go be great now. All right. I love it. All right. Thanks, John. You're amazing. So I'm so much. happy. I appreciate it. Stay on for just a second. Thanks, yeah. everybody.